Number 1. Kai Andrea Cook After using a dating app to set up a robbery that ended up with a man being shot in South Daytona, Florida, 18-year-old Kai Andrea Cook was given a 20-year jail sentence. Cook was astonished when Circuit Judge Matt Foxman announced the penalty, as her attorneys had reportedly assured her prison was not in the cards. The teen screamed and begged the court to reduce her sentence as her mother fell on the ground crying. At her next sentencing hearing, a more composed cook told the judge, I want to inspire younger girls and younger youth to not make the same mistakes that I made, and I just want to better myself and put this behind me. Judge Foxman responded, I think you've got good in you, and I think you've got potential. Don't lose sight of that. Number 2. Brandon Spencer Brandon Spencer was arrested in 2012 after allegedly firing shots at a rival gang member during a Halloween party near the University of Southern California. Four attempted murder charges were brought against him. In the court video, Spencer can be seen hitting his head on a table as a judge hands down a sentence of 40 years to life in prison after being found guilty. Editor Francis Taylor, who had long known Spencer's family, wrote that an overzealous prosecutor and the coerced testimony of a defendant pointed the finger at Spencer and without any hard evidence, he was found guilty in only three hours late on a Friday afternoon. According to Taylor, new sentencing laws and the reversal of testimony from the coerced witness could give Spencer a shot at resentencing or a vacated conviction. Number 3. Erica Maybutz, Shanita Latrice Cunningham In 2011, two South Carolina women, Erica Maybutz and Shanita Latrice Cunningham, received life sentences for the murder of a three-year-old girl. Upon learning their fate, the women started crying and fell unconscious on the floor while family members shrieked and sobbed in the audience. Butts and Cunningham were later transported out of the courtroom in wheeled office chairs, hyperventilating. Elizabeth Gordon, assistant managing solicitor for Charleston County, said the two women were responsible for the worst child abuse case she had ever seen. It is nearly impossible for words to accurately describe what these women did to that poor little girl, Gordon said. In most of the homicide by child abuse cases, somebody made a bad decision one day. Butts and Cunningham, made a decision every single day that they were going to beat that child. Number 4. Jaleel Smith Riley In Cincinnati, 23-year-old Jaleel Smith Riley was convicted and pled guilty to both charges of shooting and killing Sharon Brooks and injuring her boyfriend. Smith Riley cried during the witness statements and then, against the advice of his lawyers, withdrew his plea, incurring the wrath of Hamilton County Common Pleas Judge Charles Kubicki, who sentenced him to life in prison without the possibility of parole. After hearing his sentence, Smith Riley fell to the floor of Kubicki's courtroom. Police pulled him up, and he interrupted the judge, asking, So what does he get? Number 5. Jaleel Hoskins After he was arrested for the brutal murder of Latris Mays, a mother of five in Grand Rapids, Michigan, Jaleel Hoskins entered a plea of guilty to second-degree murder. The court gave him a life sentence without the chance of parole, prompting Hoskins to toss the podium in the direction of the judge before officers removed him from the courtroom. According to Kent County Assistant Prosecutor Kelly Kongsty, Hoskins strangled Mays to death because she wanted to tell police about Hoskins' assault outside a Southeast Side Club. After killing the young mother, he disposed of her body in a dumpster in Wyoming. Number 6. Mikkel Thomas In 2013, a jury found Michael Thomas, 17, guilty of two charges of first-degree reckless murder in the depths of Sharon Staples, 34, and the unborn baby she was carrying. Police were forced to detain him as he threw a fit in court after receiving his punishment. Thomas' attorney, Jeffrey Jensen, said his client was by no means a lost cause and told the court he hoped for rehabilitative changes. Circuit Judge David Borowski doled out blame to the teen's family and parents, as well as a completely incompetent Department of Corrections who failed to supervise Thomas. Number 7. Anthony Lugin In 2017, Anthony Lugin pled guilty to four different crimes in Albuquerque, including beating up the two-year-old son of his ex-girlfriend. During sentencing, Lugin told the judge he was a changed man, there is way more to life than violence and coming to jail. 
I have worked hard to change, so I won't have to be in jail. But in her statement to the court, his ex-girlfriend urged the judge to give him the maximum sentence possible. As he was led from the courtroom, Luke and mouthed, watch it, to his ex, then had an outburst and had to be restrained and forced out of court by a group of deputies. With this blatant act of witness intimidation, Lujan showed the judge that his talk of change was meaningless and what could have been a prison sentence of as little as two years turned into the max of 12. If you found this video informative and thought-provoking, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel.